The previous examples showed how to create animations using rigid groups, joints, and motors. This example here will show you how you can bring your designs to life to create award-winning, business-winning proposals. What we have here is the start of a V8, but when we hit the play button, you can't see the inner workings of the engine because they're covered up with the blocks, the heads, and the covers. Probably very similar to the most of the products that you have out there where there's something happening on the inside that you want to draw your customer's attention to, but there really isn't a good way to do it. Tools inside of Animation Designer allow you to do just that. We have ways of animating things over, um, or animating visibility over time, animating exploding over time, and animating the camera position over time. So we took a quick run at the navigator. Uh, we got a lot of rigid groups in here for things like push rods, rocker arms, pistons, crankshafts, all of that jazz. And we also have some uh, rigid groups of these bolts just to make selection easier. We also have a wide variety of joints in this uh, animation from sliders, spherical, revolute, and a whole bunch of them in here, and lots of couplers for cams and uh, some gears. All right, so what we're going to do is activate the timeline, and uh, we can move our cursor back and forth and see exactly the uh, how the animation uh, moves. You can see, maybe you can see the, um, the blower uh, rotate. You can see the crankshaft rotate and the uh, intake baffles open and close. All right, so it would be very cool if we could animate some of the uh, part opacity over time so you can focus on the inner workings. So what we're going to do is I'm going to collapse my navigator. You don't have to do that, but it just makes it a little bit easier to do. And if you can put your uh, timeline on a second uh, screen, that's actually the best way to work. Uh, I'm going to leave it all down here just so you can see everything all happening at the same time. I'm going to change my color option up here to visibility color. So anything that goes in and out of visibility will show up in a color, just like the color bar down here, uh, much like the motors that we worked with earlier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fade some things like some covers, and then I'm going to explode some things like some bolt holes or uh, bolts and um, uh, mounting covers as well. So there is no rhyme or reason on how I'm going to do this. Uh, it's just good to understand how to use the commands so you can apply your own creativity later on. So I'm going to take the animated uh, visibility. The best way to do it is work in conjunction with the timeline. Put your uh, cursor wherever you want a visibility to start to happen. Like maybe uh, we want the exhaust manifolds to disappear. So we'll put the cursor at the half a second mark or wherever. Simply click them. You can either select them individually, a component, or you can pick a rigid group. I've already got a rigid group created, so I'm going to go ahead and pick that just to simplify selection. Hit the apply button, accepts that input, and puts you right back into the next selection operation. Notice how it turned blue, letting me know that that is going to go in and out of visibility. And you can see how it fades in a matter of a second. The default time is a second, uh, but you can easily drag the endpoints and the duration if you want to move this uh, event around, just like uh, you did with the motor. And now we have it very gradually fading out. So I don't know, maybe around the second and a half mark, we want to hide this uh, cover. Or maybe better yet, let's get these spark plug wires out of here. So I'm going to pick them individually. I'm going to change my option up here to create a visibility effect per object, then when I hit the apply button, it's going to give me one per. And then I can take these one by one and drag them to sort of stagger how the uh, visibility effect is going to uh, be applied. So you'll see these things go invisible little by little one, the second one, third one, and then the fourth one. Kind of an interesting effect there. And of course, if you want to move things around, you can uh, draw a rectangle box around them, move them anywhere in the timeline that you want. While these things are uh, fading, let's get rid of the valve cover. That's the wrong part. Get rid of this valve cover. Change my option back up here to allow me to pick the valve cover. And it will start to go invisible. Now it's a good time to get rid of the head. So let's select that. Dance the cursor over another half a second. Pick the uh, front cover and the block. And then maybe one more at the very bottom of the model. We'll get rid of the oil pan. That's probably going to be good enough for right now. Maybe one more. Maybe the, um, the blower housing at the very top of the model. That's probably going to be good enough for, for an example here. 
Let's turn our colors off, hit the play, and see how our animation is now coming to life. And you'll see things fade out gradually over time in a sequential uh, order like we've defined. All right, now you can see what's happening inside of our supercharged V8. That's controlling the visibility of things over time. We can also control the position. So the next uh, thing we're going to do here is work with the animated visibility. Favorite way I like to work is, you guessed it, change the color up here to explode color, and we're going to start to explode things over time. Next command up here is the animated explode we'll, we'll use. One thing to note that if, if, uh, if something has a motor applied to it, you can't add a, an animated explode to it. There's just no real way to calculate how it's supposed to be spinning and exploding at the same time. So just keep that in mind that um, not all things are going to be fair game for selection. All right, first thing, let's get rid of the exhaust manifold bolts. So I'm going to um, pick them. You can pick them individually, or I've got them in a rigid group just to speed the, the process up a little bit. Actually, let's start at the very front of the model here. Let's start with the uh, this cover. Let's get these bolts out of here. Let's just drag them out of the way to wherever, hit apply, move my cursor over a little bit uh, past the, the explode point of the previous step. We'll apply a transform here to drag these out of the way. And we can see how our bolt holes, our bolts are going to get exploded out and then our cover is going to get exploded off. Now you're seeing some weird behavior here. I'm running a video capturing tool here and it's creating a lot of jerkiness in the um, actual steps itself. All right, let's uh, do the exhaust manifold um, bolts. Now these are off at an angle, but that's not a problem. All you need to do is simply select them, select that rigid group, go to the transform step, and we're gonna click this little handle on here to move handle only. This will allow me to rotate the drag handle and when I unclick it, then I'm in move mode of those bolts. We'll just drag them way out of the way. And then we'll do the same process for the exhaust manifold tubes themselves. And I'm not going to be real, real precise on where I'm dragging things to. I just want to get it out of the way because remember, this thing is fading over time. Last but not least, let's grab the uh, supercharger cover, the blower cover. And let's get rid of the bolts first. So I'm going to drag these up, and we'll accept that, and move our cursor over a little bit more. Right when it's starting to fade, we'll grab that blower case as well. A couple options that, uh, that we have on here that I'm not really showing is one is uh, I'm dragging, as I drag the, um, uh, the components, it's defaulting to a one second drag per. I can change an option here that if I drag my mouse really slowly, it will remember that amount of time and apply that to the duration. I find that a little bit more difficult to, um, to manipulate. It's just faster to, to uh, manipulate things right down in the, uh, the, time, the timeline. Like a duration, if you want it longer, just grab it longer. You don't have to worry about uh, dragging to a certain speed or, or whatnot. All right, now that I think it's probably good enough for right now, let's close this down. Let's change our color back to uh, the default. Let's close the timeline down and let's play our animation to see how everything is progressing. So not only is the animation running, but things are fading, things are exploding, and you can see the inner workings of the engine as we peel back the layers of, the, uh, of our product here. We could play around with this thing all day long, but I think you get the idea on how easy it is to create uh, these animated effects such as visibility and uh, explode. All right, last but not least, it's kind of boring just sitting here. What we're going to do is walk around this thing. So I'm going to acti activate my timeline, but I'm going to squish it way down. How this uh, camera, animated camera works is you specify the time point and the view orientation and we'll do the rest. So what I mean by that is maybe we want to look at the engine in this perspective here. So I'm going to click this button down here, the animated capture camera. 
and it's going to remember that camera at that point in time. We do have a command up here in the ribbon bar, but it actually activates a dialog so you can set things more of a manual approach. I'm not into that. I'm into doing it all pure graphically. So we're going to move our cursor over maybe the two second mark. We're going to zoom in and rotate just a little bit. Maybe do about here. I'm going to remember that camera setting at that point in time. Then we're going to, and you can see how this actually animates as we drag our cursor around. Then I'm going to zoom way in and maybe rotate just a little bit here. So we can see that supercharger cranking away and the pistons going up and down. I'm going to remember the camera at that point in time. And then last but not least, maybe I'll go to somewhere near the end, seven second mark, I think it was, and just kind of pan back and center the, the model a little bit. And we'll remember the camera at that point in time. Let's close our timeline and hit the play button and see how all of these effects look. So not only is the engine spinning around, parts are exploding, parts are fading, and the camera is animating as well. Now if that doesn't win you some business, I don't know what will. So this is really just the first step of uh, creating an animation. You want to get the model doing its magical things, but you also want to export this to an HD file so you can bring this into a other editor like um, iMovie or Adobe Premiere Elements or something like that. To export your movie, there's a command up here called Export Movie. And what you do is you specify where you want it to go, what compression, compression algorithm you want to use, and I recommend using the um, XVID. MPEG. It seems to be the best one, but you might experiment with the H.264 as well. Specify the resolution, and we can go all the way up to 4K. Specify the frame rate and the duration. Default duration is the length of the video itself, or the animation itself. If you want to bring in your uh, these resulting files into an external editor but slow things down, capture the frame rate at like 240 frames a second. That way we get a nice granular frame by frame transition that you can use that for slowing down in your your video editor. Once that that's done, just hit the uh, hit the OK button and it will generate that for you. What I would recommend doing is with the same settings, capture a few different things like uh, static wireframe, maybe even change your background to black. Uh, maybe that's uh, too aggressive of uh, rendering there, maybe just the wireframe with dimmed edges or just with hidden edges. And then you can overlay one video on top of another. You can have all kinds of fun with the video editing later on, but the key thing here is learning how to use the tools inside of Animation Designer to create uh, visibility, explode, and camera effects.